Hey guys, this is part two of how to cartoon yourself. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to cartoon somebody's hair. For this tutorial I'm going to be doing a girl's hair which has been mostly requested. Um, I'll also be showing you how to do hats and t-shirts but once you've done those two pieces of clothing you should be able to do pants and any other accessories that you want to do with the person or that's on the actual image. Once you know, once you know how to add like colours and apply shadows and highlights you should be able to do like your own sort of illustrations without watching a tutorial which would probably be better. Um, I'm also going to be showing you how to do a few basic key shortcuts which have been requested by quite a few people like switching to the rubber and other stuff like that. So um, I'll be showing you that and just before we start I want to give a shout out to my friend Nathan who I used to run this channel there Intense Music UK. I used to run this channel with him until I started my graphics channel and now he's started his own music promotion channel so uh, come check him out here it's called quantum paradox uk um he uploads like dub mainly dubstep chill step and probably other like drum and bass and other stuff like that so uh come and check him out there'll be a link in the description or you can click the link on screen okay so first i'm going to be showing you how to do the key shortcuts i'm just doing this first so that i have to explain myself and i'm going further into the tutorial where say i'll be doing the hat and i'm using these commands, well these shortcuts, so I'll have to explain myself when I'm doing it. So, first I'm going to do the eraser tool. And this is, ask, people have asked me this from when I've, say I've made a line for somebody's face, let's just say, you know, a bit thick, but let's just say that's the face. And then, um, let's just get a random colour for the skin colour. And then say I was going to colour it in, well, let's just, yeah. Colour it in. And I got that, got the line, and people were like, oh, how have you rubbed that out? Um, what you do is you press E on your keyboard, which just switches to your eraser. So if I press it, you'll see it switch to this one here, like this. That switches to your eraser. And, um, oh, I must put it so then, and then, um, yeah, to, obviously to go to your brush, it's B on the keyboard as well. So if I press B, that'll take me to my brush tool. Um, another one would be P, if you press P that will take you straight to your pen tool, um, T will take you to your text tool, um, I suppose these are the only ones that I really use in these sort of um, illustrations, I don't really use any other ones, in fact yes I do, um, if I did this now and it selects that area, if I wanted to deselect it, instead of clicking on that and then just clicking anywhere, you can just do control and D, which is D select. So, I'm just going to go back off that now. Um, what you can do as well, say you've got your brush, and I've been, I've been asked this before, when I've made my brush bigger like this, just not moving my mouse, or not right clicking and changing it like that, just making it bigger. That's with the, um, it's like a square sort of bracket on your keyboard. I'll put that on screen so you can see which, which key it is. Um, you can do that for both your pen and, no sorry, your brush and your rubber. So if I go to that then switch over to my eraser, you can go up the right, um, the one that's, oh, I'll just put it on screen. Um, obviously you'll get the hang of it, one of them goes up, one of them goes down. Uh, so there you go like that. Shouldn't have done it all on one layer, that's something I need to not do. <laughs> uh, what else did you do? Um, oh, as well, I've been asked why I never save my work when actually I do, but you don't see me. Well, you might see me saving it the first time, so what you can do is you can do Control S, or if you're on Mac, it's Command S, um, and then it will come up with that where you can save it. So uh, I'll just save it to my desktop as a test. Save it to PSD, and say if I'm working now, if you look at the bottom corner here where my mouse is, <coughs> you'll see that. If I do Control S now or Command S, it will automatically save it. So there you go. It, you saw it like a little twitch sort of thing. That means it's just saved it. Uh, <clears throat> you'll see. You probably won't. It, obviously, in the speed that you won't see me doing it. But I do this around every two to three minutes, just out of instinct. Now it's not something like I, I've just learned to do it over time, just just out of instinct. Uh, so that would obviously be a good thing to get used to for not everyone really. Um, and last thing, the, your colour, your, your two colours down here, if you want to switch over, which I usually have black and white for when I'm doing illustrations, 
you want to switch over without having to go over and press that, you can just press X on your keyboard and that will switch on like that. Okay, um, just before I start doing the woman's hair, I want to show you what um, working size I use because when people send me their work and ask me like what I think of it, um, a lot of the time the lines are a bit too thick because the, their, the document that they work on they make a lot smaller than they needed it to be so it looks a bit weird so what, what I would recommend is either doing it in 720p which is 1 to 8 I think, I think this is right for 7 yeah 720p by 720 you can either use that one and then make sure this is always on 300 you can either use that but personally I use uh, so it's 1080p so it's 1920 by 1080 and then you get your plain document but anyway I've already got this one set up so I'm not gonna do her facial features or her arms or anything like that I'm just gonna do the hair and I've chosen something fairly simple just for the fact that it's gonna save me time and I don't need to be doing something too complex uh, once you've sort of know how to add the colour and the highlights and stuff like that you should be able to do more complex stuff yourself you'll have to use a tutorial so uh, what I'll start with is make sure bef oh, don't draw onto the actual image layer itself make a new layer and then go to the image layer the, that, the picture of whatever it is you're doing and change the opacity down a bit not too much so you can't see it but just a bit so you can definitely see your black line over it um, then you're going to go back into your top layer and uh, do what you did on the first story really, just outline everything. Um, but one thing I wouldn't do is when you're going around like, the inside of a hair, say like this bit here, um, I wouldn't go over the top with the lines because then it starts to look messy and look, looks really crappy to be honest. So when you're doing the lines in a hair, don't go over the top with that. Okay, um, once you've done the outline for the hair, you're going to want to make a new layer. Um, you can rename it if you want to, but just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to. And you're going to turn the the, imi the actual image layer, you're going to turn that back to un up to 100% so you can get a s a, like, the right colour tone for the hair. And click here onto the like, black colour, and you're just going to try and select a colour that looks like it'd be right the hair so I'm gonna go for something like let's say that then you're gonna go so I turn off the image layer that you have and you're going, going to go on the top layer which will now be the one that you're gonna colour the hair in with go to your brush make it bigger and oh yeah don't forget to put the layer to multiply as well um, and now you can just colour all the hair and then after you've done that you're going to be doing the shadows and the highlights. Okay, um, once you've finished the hair layer, you're going to want to make another layer on top of that also set that one to multiply and you're not going to have to change the colour for this one you just keep the exact same colour that you had for the original hair and now what you can do is get your pen tool and um, with <coughs> with the lights and shadows you have, like, you have to sort of imagine that say the light source is coming from here so all this side here will be lighter but on this side everything will be darker so the shadows you're gonna get your pen tool and you're just gonna sort of outline this right hand side and like all of that's gonna be darker and then you're gonna go around these lines afterwards so I'll just do the outline the outside of it first and then we'll go to the insides after that. Once 
once you get to here, once you've finished your first one, um, you can go outside of the actual line because you you'll see Ryan in it, so you can go outside the lines. Um, you're gonna right click and go to fill path, and then delete the path. And then what you're gonna do is, like I showed you in the beginning part of the video, to control and click on the thumbnail of the hair layer, like the actual hair layer. And then to get rid of all this bit on the outside, make sure you're still on the um, shadows layer. Go to select inverse, and then just press backspace on your keyboard, and that'll delete everything outside of it. Then control D. Um, and then we got now going to do these lines on the inside. So the shadow is going to be on this side of the line, on each line. So I'm going to speed this bit up as well. Okay, um, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to do the whole head of hair because that would just take too long and I'm trying to make this uh, not as short as possible, I'm trying to make it fairly short and just straight to the point. So, um, as you can see, I've done it all on one side and um, this curve, it always slow, like, uh, slopes down to a point at the bottom. So when you're doing the, the highlights on the other side, it's going to be like upside down. So this curved bit will be on this side at the bottom here and it will slowly get like smaller and smaller up to the top. Um, but what you can do as well, which is what I do with a lot of mine, it does look a bit weird because they are, the shadows are really, really dark and it's like a big tone difference from the actual hair colour. So what you can do is go to the opacity and turn that down. Um, maybe mess around with it, but for something like this hair colour, I'd go for somewhere around... Uh, probably around, yeah, somewhere around 50, so that's easy to remember, I suppose. And now for the highlights layer, which just make a new layer. Um, click the colour and then go to that. And then what you're going to do is try and you've got the original colour there, you're going to go up a fair bit, so you've got like a really light version of it. So, say something like that. Um, you can drag the outline layer as well to the top. Just it just helps for it to be at the top but for this stage of it anyway. Then go back down to your new layer that you've just made. You don't have to set this one to multiply, you just keep this one as it is. And basically you're just gonna do what you've done with the shadows but on the opposite side and like with these bits of the upside down. Okay, so again, when you're at this point, um, the highlights do look a bit too bright, so what you can do is just again change the opacity down a bit. Um, I'd say again, roughly around 50, maybe a little higher, it's up to you, depends how you want it to look. And as you can see, the difference from, let's say, the top half to the bottom half, I mean, that's without the shadows and highlights, that's with it. And once, if you did it all, obviously it'd look 10 times better, but just for the sake of the tutorial I'm going to just keep it as short as possible. Okay now I'm going to be doing the hat, the, like sort of an accessory that people have been asking me to do just like how to do this sort of thing but uh, what I want to say is it's once you once you can do the hair or the face or whatever you can pretty much do any of it you just need to apply the same thing to that object. It's uh, like even when I'm just going to show you now, you'll see that it's exactly the same as doing the hair or the face or anything like that. So uh, I'm not going to do the t-shirt at the end of this one, I'm just going to do this hat now and then that should be it. I mean once once you've 
you know how to do the outline in the shadows and highlights you can do whatever you want with it really you could do a car or whatever so I'm just going to show you how to do this and then I think that'll probably be the end of the tutorial so um, again you're just going to get your pen make sure it's black um, sorry your brush then go to your pencil and then you're just going to outline the hat so I'm going to do that bit now Okay, so now I've done the outline, I'm going to do pretty much exactly what I did with this one. Once you've done the outline, get the base colour for it. Um, obviously on a new layer and set it to multiply. And since it's Tyler the Creator and this picture is, well, it looks like it's been saturated, I'm going to guess that his hat was red. So I'm going to use a red for his snapback. Well, his hat. And I'm sure do the exact same again and just colour in his hat. Okay, now, like I did on the other one, I'm going to add a new layer, set that one again to multiply, and now I'm going to do the shadows for the hat. Okay, now I've got the highlights and the shadows both finished for the hat. Um, I suppose that's it for this tutorial. Um, send some requests in the comment section down below and I'll find the ones with the most upvotes. I will do a tutorial on them once. So let me know if this has helped you. Um, thanks for watching, guys.